Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone to Friday Night Live, the 98th episode. We are half an hour late. <laughs> I apologize uh, for being extremely late. You know, I, I was under, under the understanding that it's going to be nine o'clock. No one else to blame except for Mufti Abdul Wahab, my younger brother. Always blame your younger brother. That's how it goes. But I want to thank all you guys for patiently waiting. Uh, people waiting from all across uh, the nation. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, from New York, people joining from all across. Uh, inshallah, we have a very special scholar, imam, uh, chaplain at Harvard University, doctor, and uh, Imam Dr. Khalil will be joining us as a guest scholar. Jazakumullah uh, khair, everyone. I'm going to have one of my dear friends, uh, beloved friends, dear is just an understatement. He's going to recite some Quran for us. His name is Dr. Qadi Khalid Hamoud. And then we'll have our scholar, our, our Imam, join us, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم وميثاقه الذي واثقكم به إذ قلتم إذ قلتم سمعنا وأطعنا واتقوا الله إن الله عليم بذات الصدور يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم والذين كفروا وكذبوا بآياتنا أولئك أصحاب الجحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ هم قوم أن يبسطوا إليكم أيديهم فكف أيديهم عنكم واتقوا الله واتقوا الله وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله تحبير الله أكبر جزاك الله خير ما شاء الله beautiful recitation by Dr خالد حمود He's one of my dear friends, uh, helps with the Shabab, youth, lectures, khutbas. Uh, he's a radiologist uh, here, neuroradio neuroradiologist here in, um, in Michigan, studied at Harvard also. Uh, so I'm going to bring Dr. Imam uh, Khalil, who is a chaplain at Harvard University, and the young man that just recited, I think he did his fellowship at Harvard. How are you doing, Imam? Very well, very good. Alhamdulillah, good to see you, Shaykh Abdullah. How are you? I have to apologize to you publicly because I had you wait no. for a while. And if no. someone had made me wait this long, I don't think I would still be online. So, no, 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 no. That, that shows no, no your apologies. character. Thank you so much, Imam. No, Alhamdulillah, no apologies at all. This is the time we are meant to be together. Alhamdulillah. So. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Alhamdulillah. It's good to see you all as well. Alhamdulillah. No, anyway. Since the last time you joined us, it's been over a year or so. A while, it's been a long time. So. A while. What yeah, has anything that. changed? Anything changed? You're still in Har at Harvard. Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah, we're here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Alhamdulillah, on the East Coast. Can you can you tell us in the crowd a little bit about what you're doing in Harvard, so we all of us yes. can learn more about you? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. So I'm full time there. Alhamdulillah, I teach Islamic studies uh, as well. Um, I teach the uh, a little bit of the Ihya uh, Alumadin of Imam Al Ghazali at Harvard Divinity School. 
and I teach about Islam and, um, uh, you know, a course on Islam in America as well. Oh. Um, and uh, and I, on, in terms of we do, you know, I give the Juma khutbahs on campus and we have a tafsir halaq every every Friday night, which will start in September, inshallah ta'ala. And, uh, you know, we manage the Ramadan programs. We have an Umrah program uh, where we, you know, take students to Umrah every year. Alhamdulillah, my wife and I just made Hajj this year. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, no wonder you're here. So that's <laughs> it's coming back now, Alhamdulillah. 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 So, uh, yeah, we just do that. Alhamdulillah. And just try to give nasiha and advise the students. Alhamdulillah. And my wife is also the chaplain there. She's the first Muslim woman chaplain at Harvard wow. as well. So we're both together, mashallah. So she does a halakha for the sisters there and women's sisters retreat and everything, alhamdulillah. So mashallah, both of us are there. And we have a very, very, very large Muslim community. Uh, oh, so we deal with, you know, you know, several hundred Muslim students every week, alhamdulillah. So we have about 250 students, uh, you know, at Jummah every week. And Ramadan for every night we cater to but around 350, 400 Muslim students every night in Ramadan. Uh, so it's a very, very large... Uh, community and very diverse alhamdulillah so it keeps us busy mashallah like you know you made yourself sound like you're just doing just this just this just this but everything you're doing is so big you know and um this is serving the american yeah. muslim community at, at a main one of the most intellectual campuses maybe secular campuses uh, in the west and serving them in one in a very important direction if people yeah. at these campuses who are you are getting nurtured in the secular way the, in, in education, also receiving spiritual enlightenment and direction, that becomes instrumental for their growth and their support to Islam wherever they go. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Incredibly important. Yeah, I can imagine like having their their pseudo, uh, you know, agnostic ideas that are, are presented to these people in their minds. And then you have mm -hmm. to answer these questions that bring skeptics skepticism to their to their thought all these skeptical thoughts that come and happen around them and having someone around you it's like a fad of the ayn honestly more like kifaya yeah. these, to to have that taken care of and then your wife you know oftentimes women have women don't have anyone to turn to and men chaplain serving imam is a man you know most of the time youth directors are mostly men in the community this is just the nature of our muslim community in america and i'm sure other denominations yeah. christians are also everyone struggles with this equal support for our sisters in that aspect of where your wife is also a chaplain there that is that is instr instrumental it's so important more important than i think even a man you know like no not That's taking right. away from what we're doing but tomorrow like I still there's some imams that can answer some of the questions but nobody really can answer the sisters questions as accurately like a sister who is right. seeing them eye to eye may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward yeah. you your wife and mm -hmm. the service that you're doing and Islam in America class, you know, that always fascinates me. I've taken a few classes on Islam in America. And um, just from where people don't realize how rich Islam is rooted in American society. Right, that's right. Can you just sprinkle some some of the 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 uh, fascinating realities of that before we go into our topic? Well, that's a deep thing. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's much more than just much, much more than just starting with slavery and ending with, let's say, you know, Malcolm X, for example, right? Yeah. For example, right? Much more than that. You know, there are, you know, from, you could just do a class, at least, you know, one class just on the geographical aspects of America that intersect with Islam, just the landscapes, the number of cities that are, that, that are named Medina in the United States of America, wow. the number wow. of cities named Mecca. Wow. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a law, Arizona, if you can imagine that, right? This is the only city. You know, a, named, te named tele te Tallahassee, isn't it? Te tele te something with Allah. Oh, I don't know of the, the origins of that. I'll have to research that, to be honest yeah. with you. You know, you know, you know, us, you know us Muslims, sometimes we try to make up stuff. So come it on could up. be something like that, right? But we, this is stuff we know for sure. So just the geography, just um, a lot of people don't know. For example, just something new I'll just drop on you just really quickly, just as fascinating. Um, you know, the Mormon community, uh, you know, the Mormon uh, religion, uh, they call it today the, the, the Church of, of Latter-day Saints or the Mormons. The, you know, the, the founder of the Mormon church and the entire Mormon community in the mid-1800s, all of them were considered Muslims what? by the U.S. authorities. They thought they were Muslim. They, they were, they were, and they were, they, were, uh, they were all these analogies in the U.S. papers 
about how these are the new Muslims and how their migration from the Midwest to Utah, how Utah would be the new Medina, how wow. their traveling across the United States was the Hijra, right? And how the leader of the Mormon church was the new, you know, was 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 like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he himself in court gave an analogy that he was like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very interesting stuff, you know, that most people today don't know that they built their identity off of mimicking the Muslims, right? Um, so, I mean, just if you wanted to talk about Islam, the, the, the way that Islam was presented, uh, you know, in the from from slavery, where there were many black, West Africans who were Muslim, where Islam intersected with intersected with with Africanness and blackness, but then in the mid 1800s, right before the Civil War, it intersected with whiteness. Wow. Uh, and, and and you know the Mormon Church, and then after that, it became very very diverse as well with the immigration of of many Muslims from, from diverse Muslim countries after the fall of the Khilafah. So it's just very fascinating, you know. Let's let, for those who are FBI watching us tonight, let's tell these guys how, much, how, how, how beautiful Islam is growing in this country. Like in, in just the yeah. growth in, in the statistics, what do you see as, as the yeah. demographics are just diversifying? What do you see as a teacher, as a professor? The, the American Muslim community is the most diverse group of Americans, period. That's that's a current uh, fact that if you wanted to look at if there were, a, you know, a piece of policy coming out of the U.S. Congress or you wanted to test something and see how it worked on a diverse group of Americans, the American Muslims would be that population. Latinos, Africans. Everybody is there. Every, and not only that, but it's but by far the American Muslim community um, f compared to other communities are the most educated. Right. Um, and we are the most uh, civically engaged as well. And amongst the most patriotic. Too. Really? Patriotic? Yes. yes. Amongst the most patriotic. Well, Akbar, I want to know about that. Despite the, 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 the experiences of Islamophobia post 9-11, yeah. yeah. despite some of the challenges with security issues with, you know, post 9-11, uh, it has not put a major dent in the American Muslim fabric as a whole. Right, as a whole, as a, as an entire community, people are still inherently, you know, patriotic and optimistic about the U.S. Uh, about our our country, despite past issues and even contemporary issues as well. Yeah. So I think it's a very would, positive, yeah. beautiful story. Imam, you would assume that patriotism has to do with carrying the flag, not kneeling, and stuff like that. But can you define how we are very patriotic to to our country here? Yeah. I think Amer I think Muslims here overwhelmingly recognize there's a lot of ni'am that's here, right? There's a lot of ni'am and there's a lot of khair that's here. Um, and there is, speaking of today's topic, there is a very strong uh, uh, element of justice that's here, even though there are st strong elements, you know, areas of, of, let's say, you know, injustice as well. But still, the idea of the rule of law, still the idea of uh, addressing uh, problems and record that there's there are way, ways for problems to be solved. Rights can be wronged. You know, you can you can sue somebody for discrimination. You know, if, if you can sue someone in court or you can take someone to court for a wrong in the criminal case, uh, in the criminal sphere. You know, there are there, there's a pursuit for justice in this country that unfortunately in many other places, even in Muslim countries and some Muslim countries, that same level of pursuit of justice is does not exist at the same level uh, in today's time. 100%. So, so from a justice point of view, uh, at least from a pursuit of justice point of view, uh, there's a lot of American Muslims appreciate that respect for the rule of law, which is very consistent with our Shari'i pr principles, right? The idea that the law is supreme, not the person. Wow, yeah. Uh, and I think that leads to, to a degree of respect uh, and love for this country um, because it's a love for the ni'm. They, it, it's a recognition of the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that's what I that's what I see and that's what I believe, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I struggle with, the, you know, people, Muslims, and, and I, oh, before we go to the justice discussion and Adil, um, I wanted to just, you can help me elaborate on this. If America wants to get rid of Islam, they might, they will try, they will have to get rid of the minorities who are all Muslim. So they, you can't get rid of Islam in this country by just getting rid of the Arabs. Right. 
so you it's not a one punch answer to the Islam. Like if I was Islamophobe and I was sitting on the round table, we gotta get rid of Islam and the only idea is get these Arabs out of here. So these guys who are a little uneducated, not little, very uneducated, who don't have their facts correct. It's not just the Arabs who are Muslim. People think like that. Okay, right. you're gonna get rid of the Arabs. Mm, they're a very small population of Muslims here. First of all, you don't have the right to get rid of them because they're Americans. Right. But number two, you have yeah, South Asians. Then you have African Americans. Then you have the, one of the biggest growing Muslim population, Latinos. Where, where, what are you? Where, you're going to no. start a civil war. You can't get rid of Muslims here because Muslims are Americans, and Americans are Muslims in many cases. So it's it's, it's so it's unbelievable how America has been gracious in the form of justice, allowing mm -hmm. in because of the situation in the Muslim countries. But at the same time, we're like it's not one race or demographic that's Muslim. Right. Well, it's not even uh, that. And those who would think, uh, somebody who would think about trying to get rid of the Muslims, what they would forget is that let, if that were possible, yeah, you still have Islam in this country. Because in order, if you wanted to remove everything, you'd have to remove, as I said, there are many cities that are called Mecca and Medina. You'd have to erase Islamic geographical markers. Wow. You'd have to erase um, so certain Islamic themes that have become part and parcel of this country, for example, art, um, you know, the entire genre of, 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 uh, of, of hip hop uh, and jazz even, that be became developed because of its intersections with, with African-American Muslims that were in the industry. You couldn't have jazz without African-American Muslims. Uh, you couldn't have hip hop without the influence of Malcolm, for example, and, and the idea of, of words and poetry, uh, et cetera, and speaking truth to power. You couldn't have... Uh, certain aspects of of American culture. You couldn't uh, have you couldn't have you couldn't have Kareem Abdul Jabbar. You couldn't have Hakim Olajuwon. You couldn't have. You couldn't. It would not be possible, right? And they and even in the in the uh, as I mentioned with the Mormon community, there are so many other. I mean, I'm here in Cambridge, for example. Cambridge, Massachusetts, has the first ever um, cemetery in the United States, rural cemetery. That cemetery became the design. I mean, think about this for a second here. This is worth pondering. The cemetery here in, in Cambridge and Boston, the Mount Auburn Cemetery, was the first cemetery, the first rural cemetery in the United States. And that cemetery became a model for all other cemeteries in the U.S. and all public parks. Wow. That cemetery was designed based upon the Islamic architecture in Muslim in, in Egypt. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so you have one in the, entr in the entrance of the cemetery, for example, uh, an Islamic gate similar to what you would see when entering a masjid. You have the des the designs of uh, uh, tombs and the streets and the, the beautiful walkways that are there are modeled after Muslim uh, architecture and design of their cemeteries in the Ottoman Empire and particularly in Ottoman Egypt. And so this design for American parks, you know how beautiful American public parks are. There's walkways, there's trees. There's These things are modeled off of Islamic cultures and themes of, of replicas of Jannah, right? So they said they want what they wanted here in the United States. What people, what the Muslims in Egypt had in their cemetery. They had a beautiful uh, uh, environment where it was very peaceful. There, you could actually walk and do your ziyarah there, etc. Uh, and so they wanted to mimic that, and that was brought over to the United States. So even in the dead, in the treatment of the dead, you couldn't uh, detach the influence of Islam in this country. It's beautiful how at one time the the West wanted to mimic the Muslims. And today you have sad realities where Muslims try to mimic non-Muslims. And, and yeah. of course, you know, and, and we have to be confident in our, in our heritage. That doesn't make us less Muslim, but our heritage of art, our heritage of knowledge, our heritage of civil influence, just intellectual contribution. These, when, when, when we know more about this, when you, you do look at Spain and you see like the contribution to Muslim in Europe, and then you say, wow, this is unbelievable. Like exactly the concept of Jannah and a garden, water flowing, pathways, lush trees. And there are certain definitions of what is a, what is a garden that's Jannah. It has to have these, uh, um, these features. So, and these features came from ayats in the Quran. How the Quran describes this. What does it have? Tajri min tahti nahar. It has ashjar, dawata, afnan. All these things, you know, so they try to impl implement that. But overall, Sheikh, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm so glad I'm speaking to a professor uh, so knowledgeable about the subject. 
and more of our youth need to understand this because a lot of people are like, yeah, they think Muslims just came here like 20 years ago. We just got migrated here in, in the Gulf War. No, Muslims have been here way before that and so much deeper in our, in our traditions, this country. And I'm proud, like, you know, I'm proud to be an American Muslim. And I hope that we as Muslims in America are not just taking from this community. Like, you know, like there's like, we're not just the beneficiaries of America. Like, yeah, we have good roads, good schools, but we have so much to offer this community. And, and inshallah, we will do this. And one of the offerings that our community must be part of is the justice department. Like where, how Islam has formulated the concept of justice. And prior to Islam, in today's society and other parts of the world, unfortunately, even Muslim communities have, uh, who, are, who are, don't have a, a good structure of judicial structure. You know, they have great programs, but they, they still have some imbalance where the rich can, this happens in America. Let's not be blinded to what, how the powerful and the white elitists can still get away with such type of crimes that other minorities can't. So there is a, there's flaws in the justice, it's subjective in many ways, but reality how the Jahiliya was before the Prophet's arrival and other prophets that came, Prophet Musa salam, and all these prophets who came to their nations, they were so active and just, you can't, but you can look at Dawood and Suleiman mm -hmm. like you hear one side of the story, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the liberty, like you know, to actually bring this story in the Quran. Like you can't just hear one side of the story and make a judgment. Even if you're right, you're wrong. Right. You know? And so that is Quranic. Otherwise, people just believe whatever they hear. And and you know, I always say this, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the liberty of bringing up a story in the Quran, for example, the Hudhud story or Dawud alayhis uh, uh, you know, justice discussion that he has in the Quran. You, you say like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so knowledgeable, so wise, he can bring any discussion, any story. Like, you know, if I have 30 minutes to give a talk or a khutbah, I have to be very particular about what I want to talk about. It's structured. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most knowledgeable and he has 14, 114 surahs in the Quran. He's the most structured. Him taking the liberty of mentioning something on this topic that tells you how important it is for every person to think like that, how Allah is the most fair, most just, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a member and a leader, was not just a person that prayed and had children and just commanded justice from his society. And how can you just take us back to like a, a culture of the jahiliya of the Arabs and then the Prophet sallallahu arrival and how he brought justice to say. Then, ma'am, you lead this conversation. I know, I, I want to hear from you. Ma'am, jazakallah khair. I will try to, uh, you know, the discussion, the talk on justice uh, known as Adil in Islam is a very, very um, big topic. It's also very beautiful as well. Um, so what I hope to do is, um, is try to frame it uh, in a way where we can take away, uh, we can address the topic, but then we can take away some concrete, practical examples yeah. about how we can improve our uh, pursuits of justice. So let me let's 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 discuss. What we, let's understand what we're talking about, so we're on the same page, inshallah. Uh, because we say justice, which is the right term, uh, but I want to introduce a, a concept before that. So the Prophet Ayyusat was sitting on peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, let us let us let me go back and let us begin proper. Allahu Billahi min Shaitan al Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in. Now. So the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, he enters Mecca, returning from Medina. He enters Mecca uh, in the ninth year, uh, you know, of the migration uh, in, in, in in Medina, and there's a conquest of Mecca, Feth al Mecca. We're, we're familiar with the story, and and it happens without any kind of scuffle uh, or any violence or anything. But he's got an army of ten thousand strong. And Mecca submits to the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ um, and his character. Well, one of the interesting things that happens is that there was a man in Mecca named Uthman uh, bin Talha, and he was in charge of keeping the keys to the Kaaba, and uh, uh, and he was a servant of the Kaaba, like serving the pilgrims, etc. So he doesn't, you know, this is in his family. This is in his 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 his. his he was the caretaker. So he doesn't relinquish the keys to the Kaaba to, uh, to the Prophet initially. 
So what does he do? He doesn't believe in the Prophet Sallallahu So what does he do? He goes up to the top. He locks the door to the Kaaba. And he goes up to the top of the Kaaba. And he sits there. Right? The key's with him. Like nobody's going to get the key. Right? You've entered the city, but nobody's getting inside the Kaaba. You don't, you don't have access. And so eventually, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala, goes up and takes the key from him. Right? The Prophet وسلم, I'm summarizing the story for time, enters the Kaaba, and we know the story of him toppling the idols one by one. And he topples each of the idols. Now, later on, the Prophet وسلم, leaves Mecca. It's very interesting. And when he leaves Mecca, Al Abbas asks for the key. Wow. And asks for uh, to be in to be, to 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 be in control of uh, service to the pilgrims and particularly to be in charge of providing water to the pilgrims. Abbas, his uncle Al Abbas, asked for that, and uh, at that moment, there's a verse of the Quran that's revealed, and this is where justice in a sense, is born. Not technically, not, not, not necessarily, but this is where the spirit of justice takes place in Islam. Wow. So you have to start here. And so when Abbas asks for the key when the Prophet's leaving Mecca, now it had been in the hands of a different man whose name was whose name was Uthman ibn Talha. So Uthman ibn Talha, he loses the key that were taken from him. I remember Ali took the key. And so the Prophet's leaving and Abbas asks for the key. Right? In other words, the, literally the keys to the Kaaba. So Allah reveals this verse of the Quran, chapter 4 in the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 58. billah, inna Allah ya'murukum. Very interesting. Allah commands you and to addul amanat ila ahliha, to render the trusts back to their people. Subhanallah. Right? This is really important to get when we talk about justice. We think we hear justice and we think like politics. Wow. You know, we think like criminal justice. Hold on for a second. So Allah Ta'ala says in this verse, Allah commands you to give the trusts back to their, their stewards, right? Their holders. And then he says, And when you're sitting in between people and you're dealing with people, trying to figure out what to do, what the right thing to do is, and tahkum bil abd. That you do so, you deal with these people, you deal with people on the basis of adal, justice. So that verse was revealed right then and there. And the rest of the verse, uh, Allah Ta'ala, inna Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then concludes the verse with, inna Allah ni'ma ya'idhukum bihi. That, you know, there is, no, this is the, what Allah has ordered here, is the command that is par excellence. There's nothing greater, there's nothing more excellent, there's nothing more ni'mah, yani there's not a bigger ni'mah, a better ni'mah that is more alam, that is greater than this. Wow. Like this thing, this is what's great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Allah ta'ala uh, hears everything and knows what you do. No. That verse comes down that Allah has asked you, commanded you, not asked. To restore and give the rights, uh, give the trust back to their stewards and their owners, uh, and and in your dealings with people, be just. And that's the that's the that's the command par excellence from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When that happened, Ali radiallahu ta'ala took the keys, right, and went to the man, went to uh, Uthman bin Talha. So Uthman bin Talha receives Ali. He says, "Kerehta, you didn't like me." He says, and and you and uh, and and you harmed me, and now you want to have uh, a risk. Now you want to be gentle with me, like you mm -hmm. hurt my feelings, you insulted me, you took this from me, and now you want to be gentle with, with me. Why? You want to give me the keys back? I don't want the keys back. Why? And Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse in the Quran about you. Wow. That's why. Like you're in the Quran now. Wow. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala recited the verse, right? Ver wow. Chapter 4, verse 58. In the Allah ya'munukum. Allah has commanded that you give the trust back to their owners. Right? You restore that balance. And the man heard that and he and then he became 
uh, Muslim of, of, uh, right there in, at the hands of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He took the, oh. the Aslama right there and he took the keys. At that moment, Jibreel alayhi salam uh, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Right? His background is really important. And he informed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the keys to the Kaaba are to remain in the hands of Uthman bin Talha and his family until the day of judgment. And to this day, those keys remain in the hands of the descendants of, of his uh, of his ancestors. Right. Yeah. What's very interesting is that this verse about giving things to their owners is very important because it is the definition of what Adil is. Adil or justice is really important to understand what justice is. Then in the two verses in the Quran that define it for us, and then we understand what to do practically. So here's the theory, right? There's, we don't. When I say theory, I'm be very careful. There's nothing in the Quran that is theoretical in the, in the academics. What I mean by theory is conceptual. Correct. That's a better word. Understand it. The concept of, 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 of Adil is restoring something, putting something back in its place. The idea of there's an amanat, there's a trust, and giving that amanat back means giving something, putting it in its place, right? So the keys belong, uh, even whether in that person, remember, Uthman at that time was not Muslim. <laughs> yeah, you know, so Allah yeah. didn't care whether the, you know, it's not about whether the place is Muslim or not. It's about where does the thing belong? Even if the thing belongs in the hands of a non-Muslim, that's where it goes, right? Irrespective of where, you know, what the place is, there's a right place where things belong. Now, so the first definition of adil, of justice, is the placement of something in its proper place. The placement, not of something actually, anything and everything in their proper place. You look at litter, for example, Right, litter. If you're, if 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 you if you, for example, uh, you know somebody throws paper on the on the ground, trash on the wrapper on the ground, the wrapper doesn't belong on the ground. That's yep. not justice. That's not justice. We don't think of it like that, but it's not. That that's an act of injustice. Why? Because we've not put that thing in its proper place. So teaching your children to put tr garbage in the right place. Is justice is teaching them is a part of Adam, right? oh. those basic concepts, right? Teaching people uh, to put things in their right order, to park in the right you know, Just you may want to park in the handicapped parking spot because it's convenient. That's not the right place for you. You know, uh, Adam goes into so many things. Even your eyes, your eyes should not look at certain things. Placing your eyesight in the wrong place, it's not justice. You know, even if you go to the grocery store, for example, my one of my, my, my one of my teachers told me, you go to the store, you take something off the shelf, you continue your shopping, and then later on you realize, hey, I don't need that thing, and you're too lazy to go back all the way to aisle number one and put it back there. So you just put it anywhere. You put the can of, you know, hummus that you bought with the cheese because you're too lazy to put it back. That's not justice. Justice is you put it back where you got it from. So even in those small things, the beautiful story of Ali, تعالى, his son, uh, Hassan. Uh, and there's two boys, uh, two young boys that came to Hassan. And they said, uh, Hassan, which one of us has the best uh, uh, khat, the best penmanship, the best handwriting? So uh, Hassan radiallahu ta'ala goes to his father, Ali. And he says, Ya Baba, he says, Ya, ya Abi, father, uh, these two people asked me which one of them has the best handwriting, something as simple as penmanship. And Ali sat him down on the Allah Ta'ala and looked at the nasiha of the father, right? right? And he was there when the verse of Adil came down, so he knows, right, from experience. Yeah. He says, uh, Ya Bunayya, he says, oh, my loved, beloved child, he says, know that you, when you judge in this matter, Allah, he said, judge with adal, with, wow. with justice, even in like comparing which penmanship is the most beautiful. He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about your judgment on the day of judgment. Wow. <laughs> That's him teaching his child to, and think about that at a, at a larger level, right? I mean, how many like parents are involved with like little league soccer, right? 
or, you know, in terms of like refereeing a game and stuff, you know, when, there, when there's little league, you know, there, we, when it comes to sports, we're very serious about team rules and not breaking the rule. And, you know, these are the rules for everybody, but then sort of off the field, we're very flexible about these things. So the standard of Islam is to be consistent with justice all across the board. Wow. This is the first thing. There's two things I want to mention. This is the first. The second and last thing is this. Uh, there's, there's another verse uh, that I wanted to just remind myself and all of us uh, about to, so that we understand what's going on with Adil and justice. Uh, and that's the verse we all hear. Uh, you know, in, in most khutbats, you know, in in in, uh, in surat uh, surat uh, Nahl, the honeybee, right? Chapter sixteen of the Quran, verse ninety. Inna Allaha yeah, uh, bil adli wal ihsan. Okay. Uh, and we hear it all the time in the khutbah. Really, this verse is uh, really deep and profound. It should, we shouldn't just sort of run through it. It's worthy of a topic in and of itself. Definitely. So here, Allah Taala says something that we can't just brush past. He says, Sta'idu billah, inna allaha ya'muru. So Allah commands. Commands what? Bil adl. First, adl. So adl, he commands us with adl. We know what, we, now we understand what adl is because we know it's about returning the trust, putting things in their place. Now we understand also that Allah commands it. Great. But something else. Bil adli wal ihsan. Now he, adds in the component of Ihsan. Ihsan was not mentioned in the first verse we mentioned, or it, or it wasn't mentioned at all, and it wasn't certainly not juxtaposed with Adam. Here, we see the concept of Ihsan, spiritual beauty, beauty uh, spiritual, uh, shall we say, beautiful spirit, beautiful uh, uh, moral conduct done for the right reason, yani for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhlas. Ihsan is juxtaposed with 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 Adam. And Allah ya'muru bil adli what ihsan and then Allah mentions an example of ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba giving to those that are close. This is an example of ihsan. Okay? So he mentions what he commands to Baraka wa ta'ala justice, ihsan and as an example giving to those that are near to you. And then he mentions wa yanha 'anil fahsha so Allah commands one thing and then he forbids or prescribes the another. He says, and don't do the fahsha. Wal mun kari wal bad. All right. Verse, uh, verse 90 in, uh, in, in chapter 16 of the Quran. Now, let's unpack this a little bit. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah commands justice. طيب. Then he mentions ihsan, beauty. Uh, perfection of faith, ihsan. Justice as a command here in this verse, it does not mean that justice and ihsan are at the same level. It's not like, it's not the same meaning as Allah commands both uh, at the same time and at the same level. It's not, the wow here is not just putting them both together in one basket. No, it's it's sequential. There's a tartib here. So Allah commands justice First, as a baseline, wow, as a as a fundamental foundational concept that you work from, not that you work to. Wow. Okay, this is the difference between the Islamic concept of justice and the American concept of justice. In the American concept of justice, we have a pursuit of justice. We pursue justice. Wow. Justice is an ideal. Justice is a virtue to be sought that you never really reach, but that you're in constant effort, legally, more trying to get there. It is an ideal in the American philosophical judicial system. Right? And many Western and legal philosophers uh, have, have, you know, their schools about this. You know, John Rawls, for example, talks about justice. He's one of the most the famous, famous American philosopher and theorist, theoretician on justice. And according to the Rawlsian school, justice is an ideal. It's a virtue, but it's an ideal that you aspire to. You never ultimately reach it, though. From a shari point of view and a Quranic point of view and a Sunnaic point of view, that's not right. Justice is the foundation that you build, that you're working from. 
It's the starting uh, point. Why? Because Allah commands it. Yani, Allah Ta'ala commands Salat. Right? It's the foundation. Allah commands uh, 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 fasting. It's the foundation. You start with the fara'in, the obligations are the foundations that you build from, that you work from. So you work from those foundations up to virtue. That And that's ihsan. Ihsan is a virtue. Now, here's the paradox. You start with justice. You, that's why you teach your kids justice. And the goal of moving from justice is to reach ihsan. That's the goal. Right? So Allah commands the, that you start here, and He commands that you end there. Ihsan. There's a journey. But the, the paradox is that you can never, ever, here's the paradox, you can never have, or justice can never be fully protected and preserved without ihsan. You cannot have justice without ihsan. Real justice cannot exist without virtue, without a little something extra. Let me give you an example. Um, if somebody's demanding their rights, okay, mm. if a society demands their right, justice, you where is forgiveness in that? Right? Forgiveness is a virtue, forgiveness is ihsan. If everybody were to constantly demand and demand and demand and demand and demand, and you never had any forgiveness in society, and you never had any, let's say, compassion, which is a part of which is a virtue. You just had pure, rational demands of rights that would lead to injustice. Wow. So virtue... Especially, especially in marriages, you have that problem. Yes, when people are so rigid, and marriage is an excellent example, about rights, my rights, my rights, my rights. But then the ihsan is about you. how are you... Where, where's the beauty in that, right? How are you, where's your forgiveness? Where's your generosity, right? Where's your... Where's your where's your beauty? So if you're always hardcore on the obligations, but you are not, you know, soft on the expectations, then you end up being a perpetrator of dhulm, of oppression. Okay? So justice is protected by people's ihsan, not by people's justice. That's why Allah commands both. Right. That's why. So there are times when you need to pursue your right and you're correct in getting your right. But if you live your full life trying to get your rights alone and you never forgave somebody, you never overlooked someone's fault, you were never patient and forbearing, you never were giving, then you are oppressing yourself. Right. And maybe the other person as well. So that's why Allah Ta'ala says, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَى And Allah forbids fahsha. Fahsha means major sins. Major sins. Uh, things that the shari, the, 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 that Allah and his, and his Messenger وسلم, that the Sharia says don't do. Allah forbids the fahsha because in the fahsha uh, those are moral. Uh, uh, they, they're, they're contrary uh, to ihsan. And they're contrary to justice. So Allah forbids the fahsha and the munkar. The munkar are things that should normally be, that you should normally shun as a human being. So society, the city, the country, the society should say no to those things from a fitra point of view. That's munkar. Like, you know, beating your parents, right? Do you really need scripture? To tell you you shouldn't beat up your parents, right? Do you really need revelation for that? Right? There should be something inside you that says you should be good to your parents, right? Yeah. So the moon counters things that you theoretically speaking, you wouldn't need Sharia to tell you that thing. It should be built in you some way as a human being. Just like, That's it's, it's like sometimes there's some, some type of words people use. You know, they might never be an ayah to say that's a bad word. They're just right. Like, you, you just know? it right inside you, you're like, yeah, you know, you yeah. shouldn't really say like, that. Yeah. You know? like, just That's the munkar. So the munkar is not beautiful. It's it's really the opposite of ihsan. Right? And so that's why Allah Ta'ala says, uh, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in um uh what 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 surah is it? 
استعيذ بالله I think it's Ali Imran استعيذ بالله وإذا وإذا والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكر الله right there are people who فعلوا فاحشة there are people that do major sins right they're not just to themselves أو ظلموا أنفسهم or they you know they do a sin or they wrong themselves but the word there is oppression meaning they left adab they weren't just so you can be unjust to yourself because you don't follow the rules of the sharia you've you've transgressed you stepped out of the bounds allah said don't do that and you stepped out so that's an injustice to yourself because you put yourself now in a position uh of 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 uh, you know of allah taala being upset with you so that's an un- injustice to yourself so adal and you and I remember adal means putting things in their right place so if you do a sin that's not the place you should be uh you know as our teachers said don't let allah ever see you where in a place he shouldn't see you and don't let allah miss you in a place where you should be right so that's about adal that's why in the salat time comes we pray in that time because that's adal it's in the right place to to miss the salat is a is it is a transgression so the the take home from this and I'll and I'll stop in the next 30 seconds the take home is that adal is not um an aspiration it is not a pursuit it is not the ceiling it is the foundation from which we pursue uh ihsan however the paradox is that only through ihsan is justice well does justice get preserved and does it prevail actually when a society loses its sense of virtue they lose their sense of justice wow. when we don't when we forget how to forgive we cannot be right literally with each other imam you in, in the last few minutes in these two major points that you've made you have opened up so many light bulbs in my mind you know and uh, uh, worthy of discussions and uh, subhanallah to just to say this very clear and the explicit the way you've said it that adal is not a per something that we're pursuing it's not this phenomenon we're trying to reach it is the basic point this is this is the basic basic rights of ourselves and our families our communities and then we cannot have a successful society without excellence and ihsan and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he deals with us not in adal if god dealt with us in the form of adal right. Right, we need the trouble. Yeah. <laughs> we looked at Ihsan actually. Yeah, right? exactly. If he dealt with us in the form of Adal, you know, it, it would be a mid- it would be a disaster out there, you know, in every single form, and, and from from climate to from a micro and micro macro and a micro level, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Hal jaza al Ihsan illa al Ihsan." He says, "There is nothing but excellence that I'm serving through." Like you know, and uh, he loves the muhsinin. In Allah ma'alladina taqo, He's love. He loves with those who are righteous, walladina hum muhsinun, and they're good to the righteous. They serve themselves and to the community of the righteous people. And uh, you can you can imagine the level of adal there was in the time of Umar bin Khattab, then, right? Oh. And because there was nothing but ihsan, and mm-hmm. so I, I think it would be more appropriate to say it was just ihsan and the. Yeah. In the in the offshoot of that was Adan because right. it was excellence of service. There was that one example of Amr bin Asa's son, the governor of Egypt. His, his son and a, and, a, and a civilian had a horse race, and uh, this is the Muslims gov- the governor of uh, Egypt. Yes. His son, not him. I'm talking about the son. Sometimes. You know, people say this is Sheikh son. That just I mean, chill, chill. Sheikh son did something, or someone else is like that's they, they're two different people. Yeah, they come from the same tree, but everybody has their challenges. This is a son of a Sahabi. Absolutely, he's a human, but there's a, a major lesson to learn from his mistake. He, he, they both they get into a horse a race, and the civilian son, um, horse wins. They he wins the race, you know, and uh, he. Um, the the governor's son gets offended and he takes a whip or some type of stick and he starts beating this poor guy He's like how dare you beat me how dare you um embarrass me like don't you know who i am you know in his arrogant manner entitlement so this man 
who felt embarrassed, you know, after being uh, physically harassed, he gets up, gets on his horse. He's not calling Omar bin Khattab. There's no phone calls, right? He has to go to Omar bin Khattab from Egypt. Gets on the back of his horse, rushes. You know, he he walk, he runs his horse all the way to uh, Medina, and he tells Omar bin Khattab the story of the Allah one. Omar bin Khattab the Allah one sends an ambassador for this poor man, simple man, all the way back to Egypt. And he says to the governor, I want you and your son to drop everything and come to Medina. Forget the government. Forget all these armies that are moving around in your territories. Forget all those people who are standing in line for your support. Drop all that. I want to see you in Medina. This has nothing to do with the father. It's nothing to do with the son. They both come and... Uh, Omar bin Khattab anhu asked the, the, the son, did you do this to this poor man? And the poor man came and lied to Omar bin Khattab. He said, I did. So he says, Omar bin Khattab, you know, in Islam is, you know, you, you have penalties. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you break someone's tooth, they have the right to break your tooth unless you want to forgive. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, if someone punches me in the face, they're going to get punched back. I'm not one of those guys. I'm, I'm going to walk away. You know, so you know, you're the other guy. <laughs> yeah. We're, now you change my perspective. I got to go to the Ihsan now. You know. Um, so, so he he says, take this stick, take this whip. The way he hit you, I want you to hit him back. So he winds up, pow, hits him back, right? And he says to this young man who hit uh, the governor's son, who hit uh, this poor guy, he says, that's like since when? Were you allowed to enslave people? Their mothers gave them birth when they were free, and you're trying to enslave these people. Like, literally trying to be overwhelming. And like, these are free humans. And the yeah. society, you're not, you, there's this incarceration and in, in, in enslavement through, like, you know, like these illegal manners that happen, you know, they, they talk about in terminologies, but there's also this type of mind enslavement. like, you're the superior class and inferior class. This type of injustice, Omar bin Khattab is getting straight to the core of this. Like, where did you get that idea from? That you think you're better than this person and everybody was born equal. You know? Your mom, his mom, everybody. And then he says, take the stick and I want you to hit his dad. Who? Amr bin As. The governor. This is a great Sahabi. And the young man, <laughs> he says, what has to do with the dad? He's like, it, it, the dad, this is the son. Where did he get this concept from? <laughs> I, because he thinks he's the son of the governor. Mm -hmm. Right? Of course, Omar bin Khattab knew this man would probably never touch Amr bin Aus. He says, no, no, no. He, he's innocent. He's a Sahabi. I dare never, ever do this. Nevertheless, he had to set the record straight. And justice is so important. Ihsan is so important. And that's what people, you know, if you look at, you, you could see the, the falls of civilizations, the Roman civilization, the Persian civilizations, the, uh, you know, these the Zoroastrian civilizations. The um, uh, When you see the civilization, you, one of the key things that we continue to see is the level of injustice. For example, taxation, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the way they, you find that even in Muslim countries, like, it's almost like the level of tax that they have on people for the and then the service that's providing in comparison to what they're tax it's just not right you know um so when they did this and they saw islam islam was like you could be a non-muslim and just pay jizya right like which is a taxation to the muslim government but it's less than zakah you know like zakah to be a muslim will be more costly than to be a non-muslim in muslim society people are like man and we're getting all of our services extreme justice Nobody can cheat us. Muslims are not liars. And like, we can live freely. Why do you think Muslims ruled so many parts of the world and they live coexisted with so much harmony? What, there, there, are, there, are, there are some aspects where they were in, in just rulers, unjust rulers. But yeah, overall, you saw that in Spain, hundreds of years in Andalus. You saw it in India. You have, you have that same example in, in Europe, Palestine, these communities that we saw Muslims live with justice, and though there are there are examples, don't get me wrong. Islam has the fabric of justice, but not everybody has the ethics and their uh, upright character 
to present that for them because money, greed. Right. When they, when they, they and you can't, you can't have money. And those are and those are all concepts that are antithetical to Ihsan. Yeah. They're all antithetical to Ihsan. So when you see Muslim communities and governance is having trouble with justice, the problem is not that they're not just or unjust. The problem is that there's no Ihsan. Yeah, you know, there's no protective, there's no safety net for justice. Ihsan is the safety net. So you, the question is not where's the justice. The question is where's the policy? Where's the where's the ihsan in the communities? From where's the ihsan in the system? And what happens is when you have communities and governance that try to copy and paste from the West, and the West wants to pursue justice, they never reach wow. it. So then you'll never wow. reach it. You know, you'll never reach it. And as Muslims, we are born and bred and trained in a system. That is the inverse, of, the opposite of that, you know. So, and we should know better, particularly when we say that verse every single Friday at Duma. We say it, but there's no understanding of it, and that's yes. the greatest injustice that we can perpetrate. Sheikh, that's so powerful, and I may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you. Honestly, you give us so much time. You waited even half an hour prior mm -hmm. to this. Um, may Allah make us amongst the muhsinin. And I, I mean, one, one person was telling me, if each of us dealt with us in the concept of adil. We would yeah. be at least. Can I mention, Sheikh? Can I mention one more thing? Sure, sure. You just mentioned in the Quran, Allah commands justice, as we just mentioned, but He says that He is the Ma'al Muhsinin. He's with those. Allah doesn't say in the Quran, He's with those that are just. Very interesting. You know, if you want Allah to be with you, be a person of Ihsan, because in the Quran, He says He's with the Muhsinin, as you just said. But in the Quran, he doesn't say he's with the Mu'adilin, for example, the people of justice. Yeah. Uh, so Allah's presence, his barakah, his ni'mah, is with ihs the people of Ihsan. And if you're a person of Ihsan, automatically you'll fulfill the commandments of Allah, whatever they are. Yeah. In, in justice, in Ihsan, walaw ala anfusikum. That's it. Even if it yeah. has to do against yourself. Like if you're wrong, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, ask for forgiveness. Don't think you are entitled to, to for uh, apology, and you know whether it's at a family level, community level. You know people always say, "Well, this is what it says in the contract, <laughs> right?" <laughs> yeah. That the, the, the masjid is like, "This is what it says in the bylaws. This is exactly what it says in our." And this is this is what marriage is supposed to be about. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you keep and, looking at the at, the, at the, those numbers, it's the wrong perspective. You know, people are focused about whether they are with Allah, but they're not focused about whether or not Allah is with them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, con the contract. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Wait a minute. You're omitting something. You know, I'm doing my obligation. Why are they doing theirs? Hold on for a second. Your obligation is only protected by your ihsan. What's the ihsan you're doing, brother? Wow. You know, so your obligation is incomplete without, just like your fadl salat is incomplete without the what? Wajib, sunnah. Without the sunnahs. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, no, without the sunnahs. Yeah, the purpose of the sunnahs, the mustahabbat, is to fill the deficiencies that are in the faraid. 100%. You know, I mean, it's it's the buffer. Right? That's why we do the sunnahs. Yeah, it's it's not only just for extra barakah, but it's to fulfill what's incomplete in our fadud, inshallah. Tab. Yeah, that, 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 this, you know, if, someone, if people should start things like this, they would resolve conflicts much faster. <laughs> yeah. They would save a lot of lawyer fees. You know, and, and a lot of headache, and they can give the peace to the imams. <laughs> I'll be careful. It. Now you're on the blacklist, Sheikh Abdul. You 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 spoken the truth, so be careful. Yeah, look, I, I mean, if someone <laughs> someone can save twenty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, going to the attorneys, yeah, I'll take it. You know, I'll take a piece <laughs> of that. I'm just joking. <laughs> but overall, you know, imam, I just wanted to make you smile, and your smile is so beautiful. And Allah khair, honestly. You're such a beautiful personality, beautiful soul, beautiful person. You as well. Your man. knowledge is so grounded and your perspective is so necessary for our society to mm -hmm. see the reverse from this deep angle of Adal. And I've never heard it that grounded in before. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, bless yes, you, give you a long life with Afi and Baraka, your family. And, uh, we have, we have a, a munshid from Pakistan that's joining us. He's a world-class munshid. He's almost... Court almost half a million subscribers on his YouTube page in the last year or two. This guy's growing wow. phenomena in Pakistan. 
and Masha'Allah. and growing Fina, mashallah, he's he's a he's a very beautiful voice. He had he was a I think Pakistan Idol, like you know I, yeah. I don't know if anybody even watches Pakistan Idol, American Idol, British Idol, but Pakistan Idol. I don't, but even though they have great voices and great talent, it's two hundred million people there. You got to understand a lot of people yeah. that come yeah. in the first month, and a lot of talent. And this man was one of the most talented singers in that country, mashallah. Mm -hmm. And then he changed his life and became someone that started singing the praises of the Prophet mm -hmm. and, and, and the love of the Prophet. You know, and, and, and we're very impressed. He's young, you know. Some people change maybe at 40. That's what I plan to change, you know. Like, I, you know, <laughs> like that's when I have a friend of mine, Jake Sai, he says, Kaisa, I want to do everything. I have license to 40. Then I'm going to go for Hajj and then I'm going to change. I said, well, first of all, we don't know if you're going to live till then. Yep. And two, well, what guarantee is you're going to change after 40? You know, you got to try now, start trying now. May Allah give him tawfiq, all of us. But this man, he young guy, he, he actually did it when he was young. Mm -hmm. All the temptations were around. So may Allah reward him. Absolutely. Again, thank you so Absolutely. much for joining. Absolutely. And we'll see you around, Imam. And then when I come to Boston I'm, or, or Harvard, I'm definitely going to come around. You have to give me a little tour of your campus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just Aiden, let me know anytime. Yeah, and shalom give your son to your family and the whole community. Likewise. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank please. You. Thank you. If you can all thank uh, uh, Imam Khalil joining us all the way from uh, Harvard University, professor, chaplain there. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. And I'm going to bring on uh, our, our new uh, artist that's joining us. I uh, hope I can um, see him, inshallah. Um, Brother Aqib, where is he? Uh, boom. I don't know why he's. He's uh Assalamualaikum. I cannot see you. I think though though let's try let's try this again. You uh I praise him, I praise him so much something happened to his Wi-Fi. All right. Inshallah he'll he'll be joining us. That dark screen that you see is supposed to be his beautiful face behind there. And until then, I'm gonna sing for you guys. You guys just Assalamualaikum but Aqib. All right, guys. He's gonna. Hopefully, he'll join us. He's probably rebooting his internet. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he. You know, it's Pakistan. What happens in Pakistan? You know, Pakistan. He's in Islamabad. He's not. I and mean, all. All you guys were in the West. Got all this beautiful Wi-Fi internet. You guys think you guys are cool. You know. I think he is back on, and I think I can see him. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. We miss you so much. You know, I was in Pakistan for almost 40 days and I never got time to come to Islamabad and I'm sorry. <laughs> you should have called me at least. I would have come to you. No, no. You know, it's my fault. Honestly, I was. I went to, Jama I went to Jamaat to Karachi after Eid. I was there for 10, 15 days and then I came back to Lahore. And, you know, when you're in your in-law's house, you're hostage. So I really didn't have time. I think is having Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi issue. See, if you have Wi-Fi issue, that's not a major problem. If you have Wi-Fi issue, major problem, major problem. You know, <laughs> I forget sometimes I'm still online, but um, uh, but the Akib's internet is um uh having some hiccups. It you know it, uh, it needs to be resuscitated with some you know something bypass bypass. You know, so I'm gonna um bring him back on. But in the meantime, all you guys online. Where are you guys joining me from? You know, and, and, and where are you guys? Are you guys from anyone here from Pakistan, South Asia? Anyone here from uh, South America? Anybody here uh, from the Middle East? Anybody here from outside of uh, United States, America? You know, and just want to know who you guys are. You know, anybody who's FBI, I want to give you dawah. Convert to Islam, that's your salvation. Anybody? All right, but the Aqib is joining me again, inshallah. Uh, don't worry about the Aqib, you have time. Don't feel bad about the internet. Don't get frustrated. I don't want to let. Assalamu alaikum. Don't feel bad. You know, internet problem, we have it here all the time. I just switched to my mobile. I don't know, something's wrong with my laptop. So, can you hear me oh. now? Perfect. We can see you perfect. We can hear you perfect. I just want you to get comfortable. I'm comfortable, Hoja, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. Are you holding your phone? I.
I think he's gonna have to turn his um, Wi-Fi off on the phone too. Inshallah, I mean, guys, you guys need to make dua everybody that's online. We have to have Brother Abdi recite for us because his poems are his recitation is just unbelievable. Um, I can bet you're still um, uh, having some internet issue. I'm gonna bring it back on, guys. Nobody is replying back to me. Are you guys not there? Uh, how's everyone doing? Noor, Jamal, uh, Nadia, Lucky, uh, Lucky Begum. That's a good name, Lucky Begum. See, and uh, Sheikh, uh, someone is asking me to recite. We have uh, Dr. Khaled Hamoud tuning in from Michigan. Um, where are you guys tuning in from? No, this person is trying to play a joke on me, is asking me to recite. I think it's Akib, Akib's, Brother Akib is joining us again. Inshallah, everybody, um, please recite salawat. I Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have uh, my brother, my brother, my brother in Islam, Ridwan Abdul Razak. Right there, brother. I see you, brother Ridwan. How are you doing? Uh, he's joining us. Well, this person is joining us from Las Vegas. Oh, mashallah. Las Vegas. You know, you guys need to, people in Las Vegas need to join in a little bit more. Because, you know, Las Vegas is Vegas. Kenton, mashallah, tuning into uh, Kenton, Michigan, not far away from here. Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, mashallah. We have New York. Guys, New York, we're coming. Miftah's coming to Manhattan, 6th Avenue, uh, with uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi for the Sira program. So hope to see you guys all there. Uh, so New York, New York is here, and then we have Sud uh, We have uh, Sud We have uh, someone from Canada, Canada. You know me. I'm I like Canada a lot. Uh, Ohio, welcome from Ohio, Minnesota, Richmond, Texas. Uh, we have um, South Carolina. Mashallah, welcome South Carolina, uh, Flint. Flint, that's my hometown. I am in Flint. Prince Edward Island in Canada. Wow. We're so happy you guys are here joining us. Inshallah, Brother Aqib is back. And uh, looks like someone's joining us from California. Welcome, everybody. So happy you guys. You guys so late at night. Um, you guys, someone's joining El Paso. El Paso, El Paso, Texas. All right. Then we have um, India. That's what I'm saying, guys. I, was, I knew there was going to be some people from South Asia here. You guys are sitting like a fudger time there. You guys are joining us this early. You guys are dedicated, dedicated people. Uh, Patterson, uh, we have Irving, Tex, Irving, Texas. And then we have, uh, I saw, I saw, I saw no, Patter, Patterson, uh, New York. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Welcome, guys. I, well, I wish to give you all khush amdid. Welcome. Um, here we are, guys. We're going to welcome back Brother Aqib um, to the program. I'm, I honestly, he recites so good, and I, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait for all of us. So hopefully, you know, we have him join us. This is, oh, God. Yeah, it's it's still worth the wait, you know. But I can't recite. I can't recite. Um, if he still has Wi-Fi issue for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to have to recite. I don't know to recite. Poem. I, I can't sing a poem. You want to sing a poem? No, I want to do a poem. You know, there's so many people here. I have I have a reciter who can recite poems so good, you know. And but I'm putting him on the spot. Hey, someone joining us from Philadelphia, California, Bay Area, right here. Welcome, guys. Bay Area. We were at the Bay Area a while back with Khabib, California. We should be there soon. I think the Bay Area too. This person, Philadelphia, city of love. Brotherly love, brotherly love. How about no sisterly love? Why brotherly love? Only sisterly love. Okay. Um, Ridwan says some of the best, uh, Masha, one of the best reciters I've listened to, Brother Khalid. I think we might have, be in the situation we have to bring Brother Khalid to just like close the discussion with some poem or something. He has a great voice. You know, when someone has a great voice, they can start singing anything and it'll sound good. And then me, on the other side, 
who doesn't have a great voice, even something beautiful, if I sing Sakhna um, I don't know, but the Akib, you know, he's uh, he hasn't made it back. And honestly, if we're unable, if we're unable to connect with him tonight, his morning is a pleasure time. Uh, I will be very sad. And uh, it's 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 just I wanted to hear him. Um, somebody's asking about how can I contact uh, uh, Imam Khalid Rashid. I think you can just go on the Chaplain uh, uh, hit, type his name on Google and Chaplain of Harvard University. His email and contact information is all there. Uh, Dallas, oh he's back. You you know me like guys. Meto velahun. In, in Rudu, that means I'm free. I have time tonight. I can wait all night for Brother Akhir. I don't know if you guys can. Um, you know, we have some random person out here. I think from India, Khalid. He's in, let's go, Brother Khalid. Brother Khalid, you, you have some following. <laughs> you know, let's go, Brother Khalid. Um, something in mind? In Arabic. And then someone named Muhammad Wahid. I don't know who this person is. He said he is ready. Who's ready? Is Brother Aqib ready? Uh, I, I don't see him. Uh, okay. Everybody's like, we're awake. Brother Khalid, do you have anything ready? Otherwise, we'll just call it night. What do you have in mind? We said they're awake, have you seen? Anyone, you have any poem in mind? You stay on the screen with the chair. You need a chair. No, not see him. No, come, just come here. All right. Brother Khalid is coming, and his condition is I have to sit next to him. <laughs> you know? You, man, you make me look small, man. I'm on a stool. Why don't you come here? I'll sit on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see. Go ahead. And he comes back. I'll bring him on. Bismillah. You're coming next yeah, to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. So, Look at that excitement from the from the um, from the crowd. So this is about uh, since it's about justice, Chef. Oh, you got so something on justice from about Syria. Oh, uh, Khalid's parents. So Khalid is Syrian and Palestinian. Palestinian, I, I, but my parents grew up in Syria. Yes. So. What, 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 what? You want to make sure I made? I said Palestinian, huh? Well, I mean, you, I saw you like I don't know. <laughs> so should we get started, Chef? And yeah. So I'm gonna tell okay. after. No, no, I think he's back on. No, just stay oh. hanging. Akib, how's it going? Uh, am I audible right now? You're audible. How's everything? Okay, okay, okay. Everything's good now. Uh, what did you do I, before? I don't know. I just restarted the internet. And before that, I could uh, listen to the whole program. I don't know what's wrong. Well, what you, you know that you know they say uh, when something's so beautiful? I know. <laughs> <laughs> everything is evil eye. Um, so, Khalid, you stay here. Stay here. Just, just chill. Just chill, right? Because this is my friend Khalid, right? So I don't know if you can see you properly. Um, now I can see you. You know, and uh, he's a beautiful reciter also. But Akib, I'm going to have you start because I don't know. I'm not. I I have a koye tebar nahi hai. Just say, yahan khawe nuk bhakke par koye tebar nahi hota. You know? Let's see what's messing up again. His internet is messing up big time. I love, so I feel I feel I feel like I'm putting him under so much pressure, poor guy. I don't want to put him under any pressure. Um if he's smiling, he looks so nice. So Khalid, go ahead. Bismillah. <clears throat> وذوب في ساحاتها بين المساجد والمنازل رباه سلم أهلها واحمي المخارج والمداخل واحفظ بلاد المسلمين عن اليمائن والشمائل مستضعفين فمن لهم يا رب غيرك في النوازل مستمسكين بدينهم ودماؤهم عطر الجلادل رفعوا الأكفة ضرعوا عند الشدائد 
والزلازل يا رب صن أعراضهم ونفوسهم من كل قاتل وقفوا دروعا حرة دون البنادق والقنابل نامت عيون صغارهم واستيقظت نار المعاول لا عاش قاتلهم ولا دامت له يوما أنامل وعليه أصبح حوبة دمع الثكالى والأرامل لله رب المشتكى رب الأواخر والأوائل والله فوق المعتدين فوق الأسنة والسلاسل تكبير الله أكبر ما شاء الله um, Someone is asking for a brief translation Just, Yes you should No no go ahead, go ahead. You're Arabic I know that you are um, Palestinian <laughs> Go ahead so this song is saying Abki ala shamil hawa bi'uyuni mazlumin munadil So I cry for Bilad of Sham including Syria and Palestine with the eyes of, an, of the oppressed but also the eye of the one who is watching over and protecting the Muslim land Keep going Keep going just briefly if you just Wa fi sahatiha bayna al-masajid wal manazil What's a wa adubu? Does that mean like uh, kind of I'm, I'm reminiscing or, or I feel as if I'm being transported in its in its valleys and its alleys and its corners between the masajid between, between the masjids and between the the houses that are there and then there's a dua that says rabbahu sallim ahlaha wa hamil makharija wal madakhil oh allah oh our lord save and protect its people and protect all of the entrances of this of the sacred land and all of the exits masajid. and the masajid wa hafaz bilad al muslimina an al yamain wa al shamail protect the lands of the muslims this land of 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 Bilad al-Sham, but also now, especially India, Kashmir, uh, Kashmir in China, China, all over the world. May Allah uh, Bilad al I protect the lands of the believers from the right and from the left. Mustadafin, they are oppressed and weak. Faman lahum ya Rabbi ghayruka fin nawazil. And who is who is for them, O oh Allah, during these hard times except for you? Mustamsikin uh, abidinihim wa dima'uhum atul janat wa. Jeff, you gotta do that one because that's cool. I, the poetry. I feel like it's no, not. No, no, you know, you're, you're pretty. Your Arabic is very good, and the translation is excellent. Mustam sikin abidinihim means they're holding steadfast onto their deen, like the sisters who insist on wearing their hijab to university in India. Mustam sikin abidinihim wa dima'uhum etro janadis. Janad is like the earth, right? Like yeah. the, the the dirt, uh, and their blood is the musk and the and, the, and the perfume for the soil. So. You know, they're being slaughtered, our, our brothers and sisters are being slaughtered left and right, but for us, you know, it's a shut off to, you know, struggle for the sake of Allah, and their their blood is musk and perfume for, for the dirt of that land. <laughs> they raise their hands in in humility before Allah. Anytime they're afflicted with a calamity or zalazil, with an earthquake of a calamity, Ya Rabbi, sun a'radahum wa nufusahum min kulli qatil. Oh Allah, protect their lives and protect their honor and their sharaf from every killer. Waqafu duru'an hurratan dun al-banadiqi wal-khanabil. They stood in defiance despite the, the rifles being pointed at them and despite the bombs falling over their head. Namat uyunu sigarihim wa staykhadat naru al-ma'awi. Wow. What is that, Sheikh? You do that. I'm just, I'm just closing my eyes and listening to you. The, the eyes of their young ones and their children have slept. What is that, Sheikh? Narul Ma'awil. And the, 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 the eyes of their young ones have, have slept, but the, 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 the fire of the, of the oppressor has, has been lit. SubhanAllah. La intensified more. Intensified. لا عاش قاتلهم ولا دامت له يوما أنامل. May Allah do away with their killers. May they never live to see the light of day. وعليه أصبع حوبة دمع الثكالى والأرامل. And on their killers and the oppressors is the dua and the tears 
of the of, of the widows and the orphans against that will testify against them. Yeah. وعليه أصبح دم افتكال والأمام لله رب المشتكى رب الأواخر والأوائل to Allah we complain the Lord of the beginning and the end. والله فوق المعتدي فوق الأسنة والسلاسل. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is is over everything and he will take care of everything inshallah. Perfect. Look at the person who asked, requested, said, Jazakallah khair for the translation. I'm glad I asked. We need this to be recited daily. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa fulfill the recitation. If you want to hear this recitation every day, just come on the YouTube page. You'll hear the same video. Watch this man, handsome Qari, um, reciter, Dr. Khalid. Um, he's married and he has children. How many children you got? Three. That's my mind. I'm proud of you. Jazakallah khair takbir for Dr. Khalid. MashaAllah. I can keep him all day, you know. It's his fault. He came in his office when I was doing this, you know, to listen. He's Abki ala shami hawa. That's the poem. Jazakallah uh, khair. Akhir how are you doing? I'm fine. Subhanallah. Right when he speaks, the, the, the shaitan get involved. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. That was a beautiful poem. And uh, there is really... Um, I, I'm doing my best to have him on, and and I and anything longer than this, I'm I, I can I can wait. I just don't want him to feel bad and, and frustrated. Um, we're gonna have many more nights with uh, Brother Aqib, inshallah, and uh, Brother Khalid, and uh, everybody that's here. It's 3 a.m. This person is joining us from Noor Jaman. I think they're joining us from India or South Asia. 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, it's almost 11 p.m. here. Uh, I appreciate everybody's time, their commitment to being with us every Friday night live. We are getting closer to our hundredth episode. Khalid, this is mashallah, the ninety-eighth Friday night live. You know, and, and almost consistent. There's only times that we've missed is uh, maybe Eid break once or twice, and when we had a tragedy with Abdurrahim Rahmatul Ali. Um, but Subhanallah, Mufti Dohab has been majority of the time like just consistent. Today we had a little um, hiccup because he's on his way back from Palestine, going through the customs. The the timings was not communicated with me, and I was you know I, I was busy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and never too busy for Mifta um, viewers. You know, I just it was just miscommunication. Um, and uh, but the Akib would have joined us earlier, and but he's joining us now, and he's joining us um, at Fajr time in Pakistan, or after Fajr or something. So I. Um, what, when I think, I don't know, what's, what time is it in Pakistan? I'll find out. It's early there. Um, it's uh, it's 7.58, yeah, it's early morning there. People are going to school if there's a school. Um, tomorrow Saturday. I don't know if there's school tomorrow. But um, thank you, guys. Um, Brother Aqib is, uh, has not able to join us back tonight. I feel... That I missed him, but a hearing the Abki al Sham al Hawa and the, uh, by Dr. Khalid was very, um, uh, you know, beautiful to me. Very, very um, re um, peaceful. Something I find so much comfort. May Allah reward him. Jazakumullah khair, everyone, for joining. Um, you know, I can pull this on for one more minute if if but the Akib joins back. You know, I'm so I'm so stubborn. <laughs> stubborn is me for this. Man, this man is very talented. Uh, you guys can go on his YouTube page and watch most of his poems. And inshallah, inshallah, you guys will enjoy it. Guys, have a great night. If you're joining us in Central Time here in the United States, uh, great night. If you're joining us in the morning somewhere, have a great day. If you're joining us in during the day, just have a great time. Take care. See you guys next Friday. We're joining. We have a special, special, special episode for our century. Century, you know, century in Pakistan, everything is about century. You know, century is hundred. We're about. Oh, he's back. And I, you know what? I said one minute. It's not even been one minute. He's back. And I pray to Almighty. I pray to the Mighty Lord. I pray to Allah that he, uh, his device in his Wi-Fi is working. And if it does, it's from Allah. And if it doesn't, we're still happy. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, let's see. He's I, I feel like he's joining from a third device. Um, you know, well, let's see. I'll give him a chance, guys. I pray for all you guys. Um 
somebody is saying, can you please say my name? I don't mind saying your name. Beautiful name. Yusuf Khan. Yusuf Khan. I said your name. I said it. All right. <laughs> anyway, guys. Um, fear man in law. Uh, trust me, I'm going to wait. I, I just, he looks like he's coming on another device. Um, may Allah give him reward for his, um, from trying. Honestly, he's trying so hard. He's, he's doing this out of goodwill for us, you know, young guy. He, is, he has so much more going on. He has a studio. He's making videos. I mean, like his following on, on YouTube, Khaled, like it, it just tremendously grew, almost half a million. I remember bringing him on back a few, few months ago, years ago, a year ago. It's like 40,000. I'm talking about like just crazy. I remember bringing him on in Vifta event, like he had 5,000 like, subscribers. And this is like a few years, a couple years ago. And I think, I feel like in one more year, <coughs> he's going to have such a great following, Raqib, that I won't be able to bring him on. You know, he's going to be too big. Head could be big. <laughs> I think you made it. Can you hear me now? Perfect. I can hear you. Where'd you go? Wait, wait. I know, but he's just again. He's a wait, wait a minute. Inshallah, it works. I'm going to keep him on. Uh, I, um, I, I cannot hear you at the moment. Okay. Um, honestly, I think it, he's there. Like, you know, I, I can see him. I can't hear him, and he can hear me. It's, uh, these, these are the challenges of doing a, a, a live event. But, you know, I smile in the face of these challenges. I like it. Because, you know, we're trying our best. And he's trying his best. And you guys are with us. You guys are understanding. If you guys are bored, take a blanket, go to sleep. But if you're enjoying it, stick around. Um, he's frozen. Yeah. Uh, you, know, the, you know, the irony is I don't even have his number. So I want to tell him we're okay. We'll do this again. So I don't want him to go and come back. But this time, I'm losing my patience. <laughs> hey guys, take care. Um, I miss all you guys and hope to see you guys um, actively around, inshallah. We'll bring him back. We'll bring him back, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Assalamu alaikum.